I just remember getting up on Sunday mornings and the pashofa would be cooking. To us, it was like just making a pot of beans and it was always made every Sunday. So it was one of our main staples growing up. My name is Gina Brown and I make traditional Chickasaw recipes. Today, I'll be making pashofa. The pashofa ceremony was a ceremony that our ancestors did whenever we had a sick person and the medicine doctors would come in to a house and they would perform a ritual over the sick person. And all of the family members would have to sit outside. And while they were sitting outside, they would build this fire for the cooking of pashofa. So pashofa is a very important dish in Chickasaw families. My cousins and I, we would always expect pashofa when we went to my grandfather's house. If we had big family gatherings, Christmas, birthdays, any type of big event, that would be all that the kids would eat. The first time that I began making pashofa was right after my father passed away in 94, and we were trying to get food together, and one of the main courses that we always have at our Chickasaw funerals is pashofa. Nobody had volunteered or was bringing pashofa, so I took it upon myself to make the pashofa, and it turned out pretty good, and everybody ate it up. I remember I started my kids and my grandkids eating pashofa when they were just tiny babies. And I would give my grandbabies maybe a spoonful of the juice just so that they get the acquired taste. My children grew up eating pashofa and wild onions and learning that we had traditional foods that our ancestors brought from our homelands. Families would go out to the fields and pick the corn and bring it back and shave it off the cob. Then they would clean the corn. The big kernels would be chopped into smaller chunks. And that's what the pashofa looks like today is in the little cracked corn. The pearl hominy corn is what it is. To get pashofa today, we have to go to the stores and purchase the corn while it's already cracked and it's already ready for us to clean. By cleaning it, we would take it home and clean the corn, make sure that the holes are all out, because that's one of the first things that some of my elders will ask me is, did you clean the corn good? Just by looking at it, they can tell what you did and if you did it right. My next step is putting the corn into some hot water. Usually I cook pashofa over an open fire. Once I dump the corn in, then usually I have my meat chopped up and I will mix that in with the corn at the same time. I cook the pashofa and the meat until the corn is soft. Usually the cooking process takes about four to five hours. When I cook pashofa in a roaster, I set the corn about uh, 250 and let it cook all night so the corn and the meat cook together and the, the meat really enhances the flavor of the corn. In the beginning when I made pashofa I would make it with pork steak or pork chops. Later on I started making it with pork ribs and then now today I began making it with pork loin. So anytime you taste my pashofa it's got the pork loin meat in there. It makes the corn taste flavorful, and once the salt is added, it really enhances the taste of the pashofa. My children know that we have traditional foods like the pashofa, and they are able to go out and teach other Chickasaw children how to look for wild onions or how to cook pashofa. I'm glad that they know this information so that they can pass it on to their children and grandchildren. Traditionally, pashofa is a Chickasaw dish, and passing on these recipes is a good way to know that they are Chickasaw and they know where they came from. And I believe that it will continue to be passed down from generation to generation.